Hi and welcome to this OmniTiles with SketchUp workflow tutorial. In this tutorial I'd like to show you how you can set up textures and materials with OmniTiles standalone to use in SketchUp with the standard material and in a second part with V-Ray. So let's start. I'm using OmniTiles here to load a simple preset. Um, this I'll take the first one here, uh, open, and it automatically loads all of the textures, the multi-textures, which are then randomized in this pattern. I can further adjust these settings, but let's first do the basic steps. I'm rendering out this with the output setting. I'm choosing an output folder. This is my previous version. Let's Override this, let's say this is two. Choose a format, JPEG, OK, and I'm rendering. It renders out all of the different layers, diffuse, bump, etc. But for now, let's focus just on the diffuse texture. So let's create a new material. I'll name this OmniTiles Rex1. And I'll load the texture, which is this one, which I rendered out. Open. OK. Let's assign this to the wall. And the first thing you'll notice is that the tiling is um, far too high. And this is because the UV settings are um, too small. 10 centimeters for the whole pattern is too small. Let's change this to one, and we'll see it's uh, it's much better now. But um, we're still seeing some kind of repetition, like this one, two, three, four. It's all the same, and this is not really what OmniTiles is made for, and it gives you much more flexibility to adjust this. So let's change the settings within OmniTiles, and uh, um, do, let's change the tiling here to something like maybe 15. And there is more randomization in this pattern. I want to choose and use this whole pattern within um, SketchUp within this texture. I'll just hit, hit render now and it automatically writes the bitmap textures to, um, and overrides the previous ones. Now this doesn't automatic, uh, automatically update, but if I choose this once again, it loads. Um, now the, the texture is, has a higher density, so let's we'll change this to Three, and I have less repetition within the entire wall. If I want to change the corners, like here for example, um, the red bricks are adjust adjacent to each other, but here they aren't, I can do this by choosing this face and then select position. Now I can adjust this a little bit. Now it doesn't match here, but that's basically in the nature of how um, the wall is built up and, and the building. Um, so you might want to change your building or you, you might want to change the width of the UV map or something. And that should work much better then. Okay, so this is the basic workflow. Um, let's do some more steps within the material. For example, I don't like this, uh, the, the red bricks. This is just uh, to demonstrate, demonstrate the options. And um, I want to have some other bricks. Uh, let's clear the bricks. I'll scan in the texture library for some other bricks. Let's see, um, maybe irregular gray. Select folder, it automatically loads all of the textures. And uh, within displacement mask, bump, channel. Let's see how the preview looks like. Well, that's fine. Let's render. reload and here we go it's the same pattern with some different bricks and uh, I can further adjust these within the options that OmniTiles offers for example I can give this all more randomization maybe uh, some more saturation and some more um, value adjustment uh, randomization sorry render out render OK, reload, here we go. So this is how you can quite quickly adjust your textures to match the needs of 
your um, uh, of what you what you want, what your architect wants, and um, okay, so um, let's move on to V-Ray. There are a few things that are different from the standard material workflow in SketchUp, but um, let's first start to create a material with OmniTiles. Let's load a preset, one of the full presets. Maybe let's take this one. Then again, choose the output. For that output, OmniTile SketchUp V-Ray 1. JPEG and render. Okay, so let's create a material. I'll use a generic material. Load the diffuse map, bitmap, and then the location where it was saved. Diffuse, open. Here we go. And let's apply this to the selection. And again, you see that the, there is a lot of tiling and the texture is far too small. And we can change this here. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's see how that looks like. There's the texture. And uh, I want to have this on all the others. And I, of course, I can select this and apply the texture. But actually, there is one thing that one needs to know which is that the entire geometry can only be um, generate displacement if this is a group or a component. So I'll make a group out of this and now I'll assign the texture once more, uh, the material, sorry. Here we go. And um, let's see how that looks like. Okay. So next um, I want to add a bump map, turn this on, load a bump map, bitmap, and then we'll take this mask. There is no bump because I think we don't have a bump map within OmniTiles in this case. Let's see. This play, yeah. Oh, there, there is a bump map, yeah. Okay, so let's see whether it is. Oh, there it is. I see. Okay. So maybe we should look a little bit closer to see if that there is any bump map visible. Yeah, there is. Now, first of all, this is a bit too much. So let's reduce the bump map amount. And second, I can see that the entire resolution of the texture is not very high. So um, I want to change this and this can be done quite easily within the render output. Let's choose 4K, once more, render. Takes a little bit longer to render in this case. Now the bitmaps which I used for this texture are replaced with the higher res resolution versions. And if I stop this and re-render, it will reload the textures and you'll see that these are far, uh, have a much higher resolution. So that can help quite a bit. And now let's add a displacement map. Displacement, bitmap, the displacement. Now I have to redo this once more. And now you, you also see displacement. Um, if, if you can't really see this well enough, we can just also turn off the diffuse map and now you see the displacement you can adjust the displacement amount turn this on again and there we go Oops. now I also want to add something on the ground and for this let me 
create another texture. I'll use, well, let's see, um, maybe I'll use this one, the herringbone driveway. See the preview, maybe let's use a different tiling in this case, a little bit higher so there's more randomization. And um, I need to change the output, this is important because otherwise I would overwrite this file. V-Ray 2 bike boy or floor or whatever. Choose the output format and 2K is fine, render now. And let's load this one here in a new material. Eric, we can rename this, of course. Bike way, whatever. Choose the diffuse map, which is this one. And assign this to the geometry. There we go. And that's how it all works. Um, of course, this needs to be adjusted. Yes, and this is the, the way it works. I think it's quite handy, especially if you want to flexibly change like bricks or anything else. And um, yeah, I hope you like it. Let us know if you have any uh, suggestions or uh, any feedback. We're always happy to know what you want to do and how you use our products. And if you haven't tried out OmniTile standalone, download the demo. It's full featured. And um, yeah, hope you like it. Thank you for watching.